Good day, everyone. It is Roxy Zwicker here, Programming Manager at PPM TV with another episode of Community Connections. I am very excited today to bring you a very special guest, Sam Reed, who is involved with the Wood Island Life Saving Station. And there is a lot going on at Wood Island. If you have not noticed the beautiful lights shining like a beacon at night just past Whaleback Lighthouse beyond Carey Point, there's been some busy bees out there. And of course, I'm really excited to find out what's going on, what the efforts are, what some of the history is. So Sam, without any further ado, tell me a little bit about your involvement with Wood Island Life Saving Station. Well, that's very kind of you, Roxy. I, I think I was absent from school one day and the teacher was passing out assignments. So that's what happened. I, I ended up uh, helping out here. I am the uh, president of a, of a charity, of a 501c3 IRS approved charity called the Wood Island Life Saving Station Association. And uh, our group, uh, we have many hundreds of supporters across the seacoast. Uh, we have contracts with the town of Kittery and the town of Kittery owns the island and they own the building. And our contracts allow us to restore the building for the public as a maritime museum. And so we're almost there. And so that's what we're up to. So it has really been quite an endeavor to bring it from what it was to what it really is about to be. Sam, can you give folks an idea of what sort of situation you were first dealing with out there on the island? Uh, the building was uh, beyond condemned. It was a quote unquote dangerous building by, by state statute. It was uh, in need of uh, immediate attention. And the town really did not have uh, the, the funding or frankly, you know, the interest uh, to restore the building. They had received it from the federal government in 1973 and had done very little maintenance, just, to, just sort of minor stuff, but that time had caught up to it and the, the roof was collapsed. There were no windows or doors, uh, six or so inches of toxic bird guano all over everything, uh, asbestos all over everything, uh, mold, lead paint. So the building was collapsing. It was a dangerous facility. It was, it was in need of a lot of love. So what were the circumstances that led to the building being abandoned? Well, as I say, that the town owned it and it had never been open to the public. So it had been a Coast Guard facility before the Coast Guard existed. So it was a life-saving service building. Before the Coast Guard, there was the U.S. Life-Saving Service doing basically the same functions. But that, that the town of Kittery had never uh, used it. It was just given to them in 73, as I say. So they hadn't really used it. So it didn't really have a purpose. And you know, it would take a lot to restore it and open the public uh, access. So uh, it, it clearly was gonna be a big a challenge. And I don't think the town really had a lot of interest in doing that by themselves. Now, how important is it for us to sort of go back in the time machine and see what was happening at the Life Saving Station? My understanding is that these would be men in rowboats rowing out to any right. mariner who was in distress. Can you Correct. describe a little bit of that history for me, Sam? You bet. And uh, let's say nationwide in the East Coast, West Coast, Great Lakes, there were something around 200 of these facilities. So they were, they were common. There were many of them. Uh, and that was uh, before the radio, before radar, before really engines even had boats in, uh, sorry, boats had engines in them. And so you had a, a whole system of uh, small buildings along the coast, particularly the dangerous areas where there was a lot of shipping, where men could wait and just by line of sight could see if there was a problem. And if there was, they would launch a boat and go try to help. And what's crazy is uh, those events would only happen in storms, oftentimes in the winter and oftentimes at, at night. So you're getting in a rowboat at night in the winter storm to go try to save people. That's quite a story. And that's really one of the primary reasons that restoring Wood Island is so important. 
So are there any particular sort of tales of heroic rescues out there or is there one that really sort of sticks in your mind that maybe people don't know happened at Wood Island? That's a great question, Roxy. Uh, we have done a lot of research. So our project, so to speak, started in 2009 when the town started talking about demolishing the building. And we worked with them to create those contracts until 2016. So we're now in our sixth year of restoration work and our 11th year of working on the project. And in that process, we've done a ton of research on all the wrecks and the rescues that occurred from Wood Island. And the way we did it was we did a, um, um, a newspaper clipping service, which is wonderful if you don't know, and uh, searched Wood Island, searched Coast Guard, searched Life Saving, and pulled up hundreds and hundreds of articles describing all of these things. And we've now cataloged them all. We have them all listed chronologically. It's fascinating. There are hundreds of them. One that I, really sticks out for me uh, was May 3rd, 1920. So this is before truly any recreational boatings going on in the Piscataqua River. And a boat is heading out from the Portsmouth Naval Shipyard out to the Isles of Shoals and taking uh, supplies and materials out to some Navy folks that were out there. Uh, as the boat passes Wood Island Station, it's obviously seen by the men that are in the tower. And soon after it passes Whaleback, there's a spring squall. So a big dark cloud, lots of wind and rain. And when that clears, the boat's gone. So that's horrible. They get in their rescue boats, they go out, and there are uh, four men aboard. Two are missing and were lost forever. Two were found. One was in tough shape and one was doing fine. They brought the two back that they could find to Wood Island. Uh, the one that was having difficulty died. And what was dramatic about that was the man that died was the son-in-law of the keeper of Wood Island. So the head man at Wood Island's daughter's husband. So that's tough. And you have to, of course, imagine, you know, telling the daughter how hard that would be. And that story was published again in the uh, August of 2019 in the Portsmouth Herald. And the day that it was published, a man contacted me by email and I had never heard of him or never met him. And he said, the man that died was my grandfather. The man that did the rescue was my great grandfather. The widow was pregnant with my mother. And wow. that of course is incredible. But what was really dramatic was they said, our family has been collecting the information, artifacts, documents, photos about the great grandfather for a hundred years. As I say, 1920 was this one. And they'd like to donate all of the family archives to our museum. So that has happened. And I have right here with me um, an example. So the man that did the rescue was um, Charles oh, wow. Hand. So Charles Hand was the, the bosun uh, who tried to save his son-in-law. And we now have this extraordinary, what I guess we could call a permanent collection for the museum. And he was a wonderful person to, to get lucky like that with because he started as the most junior man and warped his way, promotion, promotion, all the way up to become the head man. And to have all that information is just, it's, it's invaluable. You could write a book on just that story alone. That is amazing. Crazy. Well, I'll go, I'll go you one better, Roxy, where we're getting to know each other. I had uh, immediately asked him, uh, can I see all these things? And he said, sure, I'll be over in 20 minutes. I live in Portsmouth and I'm here in Kittery Point. So he came right over, brought all the materials over right away. So it was really dramatic. And uh, his name was John Connors. And sadly, he just died this January. So it's very, very fortunate that we connected when we did and he provided this gift when he did. So John came over and he provided all these materials and we're getting to know each other. And he said, um, yeah, and my great grandparents were married at St. John's Episcopal in Portsmouth in September of 1896. And I said, well, that's interesting. Uh, 1896, my grandmother's grandfather, so my great, great grandfather was the minister at St. John's Episcopal in Portsmouth in 1896. And he said, well, hold on, hold that thought. Don't, don't move. I have the wedding certificate here. 
So I don't know who has the wedding certificate of their great grandparents, but he did the original. He had all these original documents. And sure enough, my great great grandfather was the minister for the wedding of his great grandparents. And the witnesses were the great great grandmother and her sister. So that was that was chills down the spine right there. That is beyond faith that <laughs> you two have Crazy. met. Crazy. 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 That is I, it's almost unbelievable, but I know those things happen. And yeah. what it I mean, what an amazing experience. It was. It was. And it makes one feel, you know, you're on the right path. You know, whatever's going yes. on here with this restoration, there's a lot of um, you know, challenges, um, not least of which is raising the funding to do all this interesting work. Um, and I know that's how you and I connected. Um, you know, raising the money's hard, uh, getting the permits, figuring out the engineering. Um, there are a lot of challenges. But when that story like that comes along, um, you know, it's exciting. And I, I've seen many, many visitors to Wood Island just, just sparkle and just, you know, light up and really, really enjoy being there. It's a very special place. Uh, we're excited to say uh, this is just the end of June now, uh, shortly. So probably the first week in July. 2021, uh, we expect to see the pier uh, completed. So this pier has been a big part of the project and mm -hmm. it's almost done. And what's mm -hmm. cool about that, I'm sure you're familiar with Gundalo. It's another oh, show sure. and it's here in Portsmouth. It's an 18th century replica sailing barge. So Gundalo provides public access to the water. And so you pay a fee, you go for a sale. Gundalo, the pier that we're talking about is designed for gundalo there's also two or three other major tourist boats heritage is a wonderful partner of ours they have five trips a day coming right by wood island with boatloads of, of visitors so that is to say they will also be coming to wood island to see the maritime museum to give their visitors a lovely experience so that's really how we see this happening and sure you've got to have a pier to make it go Mm -hmm. So tell me about this fundraising effort, how people can get involved, what sure. you need. Sure. Well, we are, um, you know, well along on this, uh, that the, the reason that uh, you and I connected, I believe, is we recently, uh, Wood Island, sent out a mailing to every household in Kittery, and it was a wild success. Um, we, I'll show you what I got right here on my desk, Roxy. Um, these are um, these are donations. Oh my gosh! I know those are the ones I haven't opened yet. Those are the ones I haven't yet opened. So there are a lot, and that's just from that mailing. Um, what's exciting about that is a lot of them are ten dollars, twenty dollars, fifty dollars, and we raise you know a lot of money from big foundations and uh, individuals, and we've you know, really done well with that. Uh, State of Maine uh, has donated over 200,000, about a quarter of a million. Um, the federal government, lots of, lots of money. So when we have a mailing to all of Kittery and receive smaller donations, it's wonderful news. And the reason we did that mailing, um, our charity, Wood Island, raised uh, $30,000 from a foundation to create a new class at Trape Academy at the high school. And that class is for a year. And the first half of it has just ended. The second half will start again in the fall. I think there were 13 students. And the town of Kittery uh, was incredibly supportive of this class. The Trape Academy trustees also helped pay a little. They paid 5,000 for this. So our uh, funder, um, uh, the Robbins de Beaumont Foundation, asked us to help raise uh, a $5,000 portion just to kind of help out. And what they wanted to do was see lots and lots of small donations. So we could find one person, I suppose, to write one check for $5,000. But what they preferred is those kinds of things, lots and lots of small gifts. So we did that. And uh, I'm pleased to say the students are fantastic. I, I got to speak to the students a couple of times. We have chosen a particular wooden boat for them to build. So the class is a wooden boat building class. And they're learning wooden boat building skills they're also learning history, uh, the maritime history of the Piscataqua. And those boats, there'll be two of them, and they'll be identical. 
And the reason for that is so that they can race each other. Really? So cool. So that is to say, wow. uh, historic replica boats. So those boats were at Wood Island Station, that these were not rescue boats. These were sort of go down to Frisbee's and pick up the mail and get some food, uh, you know, just, a, just around the corner boats. They are uh, three man, six oared boats. So they're very special, very gorgeous. They do not exist. These will be the only ones. We have the original plans and they were initially built at Lowell's Boat Shop in Amesbury, Mass. And if you've never been to Lowell's, it's the oldest wooden boat building shop in America. And it's like a Hollywood theater. You wouldn't believe how beautiful it is. And it's open to the public. You should go see, it's incredible. So we Wood Island partnered with Lowell's Boat Shop to bring uh, the instructor from Lowell's to Trape to teach the kids wooden boat building. And it's been fantastic. So we're really excited to get those boats built this fall and they will complement another boat that we just got. And that boat is super crazy special. And I jokingly say, if you're having trouble sleeping, go look on our webpage. We have a 25 minute video that will help you. But I'm joking because the 25 minute video is fantastic. And it's all about the Mervyn Roberts. And the Mervyn Roberts is a original, not a replica, 1930s Coast Guard rescue boat. So it's a rowing boat. It's an eight oared nine man rowing boat, one man steering. The thing is enormous. It's 26 feet long. It's coming up 3,000 pounds. And we're very fortunate to get it. And the story of how we got it is the 25 minute video that you should definitely go watch. A lot of wonderful coincidences happened for us to get that boat. And it's now being restored. And its purpose will be to live at Wood Island and show visitors how these men actually launched this boat because one of these exact boats was at Wood Island. So it wasn't you know, a stretch at all to understand. What happens is the boat sits in a cradle on train wheels and the train wheels run on train track and the train track connects the building to the water. It's over 200 feet long. We're rebuilding it to the exact plans that we got from the building from 1908. And I mean, holy moly, nobody in the US has a marine railway at a life-saving station with a historic boat launching into the water. So it's gonna be really, really, really cool. So this, this is beyond special. This is world-class. 100%. What's happening at Wood Island. 100%. And to have the public welcome there is extra special. So as I say, there used to be maybe as many as 200 life-saving stations. It's down to probably under 100. And of those that are restored historically, which Wood Island is being, a very small number, but those that are open to the public is even a smaller number. So we think there are eight or 10 life-saving stations in the US that are open to the public, certainly none in Maine. There's mm -hmm. one or two others in, in Massachusetts nearby. So it's a very rare thing to have a life-saving station that's open to the public. And what's crazy about Wood Island, you'll be able to rent out the entire facility for an event, which is really neat. Um, we're also going to create a docents program where people who want to come help and assist in the, the whole undertaking uh, can spend the night. So it's a really, really special thing. And yeah, Wood Island's crazy rare, super rare. Having a boat like that, crazy rare. Putting it on a marine railway, nobody's got that. It's really, really fun. To see the journey from what it's come to what it's about to be is absolutely amazing. And I'm, I'm so glad the community can follow this every step of the way and the support um, I'm just thrilled to see is it's almost overwhelming from from where I'm sitting here, what you're well, Roxy, telling me and what you're showing me. Roxy, let's go. Let's take your show live to Wood Island. We have a fantastic Internet out there. So we have a microwave line of sight from shore that goes to the island. We have a uh, fantastic Internet on the island open to the public. There's no you know passcode or anything. So just come on out. We'll, we'll do your show there. And I'll I would absolutely what, love to. It'd be a blast. And I'll tell you what we did this morning. Um, I hosted uh, nine men and women from the Maine Army National Guard. And if you don't know, we have had a partnership 2018 and 2019. The Maine Army National Guard came to Wood Island in huge numbers as their annual training. So I believe there's something around 3,000 guardsmen in the state of Maine, and they have many, many different skills. And what they do is they look for projects that they can hone their skills, practice using all their equipment. 
And after a lot of discussion, I mean, years, we uh, encouraged the National Guard to come and they built the North Seawall in 2018. They built the South Seawall in 2019. And these are million dollar plus projects, each one of them. And we provided, we the charity provided the materials, the permits, the engineering, which is no joke, it's very expensive, but they provided all the labor for free. So it was absolutely unbelievable. No way we could have done the Wood Island project without the Maine Army National Guard. And they're planning to come back this August. So today's wow. get together was a recon where we look at what they're gonna do this August. And they're only gonna come for probably 10 days with something around 30 men. So small potatoes. 2018, they came for 30 straight days with two platoons of 60 men and women each, 120 soldiers plus wow. officers. Yeah, huge, huge, huge. They stayed in tents at Fort Foster. So they, they camped out and it was just incredible. And, you know, we shuttled them in boats and they, oh, it was unbelievable. So the, the logistics alone, I think we took uh, 21 concrete trucks out for each of, 21 or 22 for each of the walls and then hundreds of precast concrete blocks. The blocks were 3,200 pounds each. I think we have 240 of them on the north wall and maybe 220 on the south wall. So just moving that kind of material around, very interesting stuff, let me tell you. <laughs> let me tell I you. Bet. <laughs> I bet, what, what an endeavor. I mean, it yeah. seems like everybody's had a hand in, in helping out Wood Island. It's amazing, all of these oh, different gosh. organizations. Oh gosh, yeah. I mean, the Coast Guard are huge supporters. Uh, the Portsmouth Naval Shipyard, uh, the only way that we could move all that equipment, the Portsmouth Naval Shipyard has a fabulous heavy duty boat ramp. And so they gave the army uh, permission to use the Navy's boat ramp. Imagine the paperwork involved in that. And oh yeah, it was a lot, but that worked like a charm. Uh, the Kittery Water District, Mike Rogers uh, gave us use of the, the water district. I'm sure you know is right near uh, Carl's Meat Market, mm -hmm. uh, a Golden Harvest right on that corner. And they, um, they just let us use their space back there for a few weeks to put all this equipment and the blocks. We had, you know, 11 tractor trailer loads of blocks each year. So, I mean, it's a lot of equipment, a lot of material. And a lot of folks have been extremely helpful. I'd, I'd mention um, Pan Am Railways. So the freight rail company of Northern New England donated the train track that we needed to build the Marine Railway. And it's on the island now and it's from 1893. And the reason we needed a particular rail is that was what was there. So we're historically mm -hmm. restoring it. Well, there's no such thing as the right size rail anymore. You have to go find the old rail. And once we did that, uh, Pan Am Railways was kind enough to build us. I told you the special cradle for the boat with the train mm -hmm. wheels. They built that for us from 1922 plans that we gave them, donated the whole thing. So they've been incredible good partners. So there's going to be a lot of thank you notes being written, I think, <laughs> Sam. Get ready for some writer's cramp. I, I think it's on the way. Whoa. I think the writer's cramp on that pile of donations is a real problem for sure. No, it's, it's good stuff. And so I apologize if anybody's watching. I haven't thanked you for your recent gift. It's on its way. But yeah, it's exciting. And, and by doing all that, um, I'll tell you, a huge community has formed. So there are a lot of people out there with the you know, little Wood Island hats or magnets, et cetera. But a lot of people really feel strongly. And I have many times been at public events. You know, the Kittery Block Party is a good one. Mm -hmm. Sad that they canceled it this year and last. That block party, I mean, I've met more people there. You know, I go stay there all day. And, you know, people come up and give me a hug to say, you know, my husband proposed marriage to me on that beach. You know, it means the world to us that you have helped save this building. And, you know, we really care a lot about it. We haven't really been there since, you know, so there's a lot of folks that want to come see it. And, you know, we're just dying to get it finished so we can get it open to the public. Uh, I can't wait. I am so excited. I can't wait to get out there and see it myself. Although yeah. I, I, I will have several motives for coming out to see it because Sam, as we were talking before we started today, I, I am also a person of many hats and I'm a purveyor of ghost stories. And Sam, you said that there were 
perhaps a couple of ghost stories out on Wood Island. Yeah, there, there are. I wouldn't. Yeah, I wouldn't know about truly ghost stories, but there are definitely some interesting stories. The uh, yeah. the building that you see at Wood Island was built in 1908, and uh, was was closed, was deactivated in 1948. So it was a 40 year operation. The Coast Guard moved to uh, to Newcastle, where they are now, and before that, so in the 1830 time frame, a few buildings were built there to house yellow fever victims as a oh, wow. thing. So if a ship is coming into Portsmouth and it has people aboard who are sick, they would be dropped off at Wood Island and stay in buildings there. So those buildings no longer exist, mm -hmm. but you have to know that there were definitely a lot of spirits uh, activity from mm -hmm. people uh, with yellow fever dying out there. Wow. wow. So that's interesting. Whereupon in 1974 in the spring, um, some folks went out there in a kayak. People go out in kayaks all the time. And I should say Wood Island is a public park. If anyone wants to show up in a kayak, you're welcome to do so. Um, people rode out in a kayak, 74, and they, they arrived at the island, you know, after the winter so it was springtime so every winter there's movement of sand and rock you know there's lots of things happening they found two human remains so two bodies wow. and i think we don't know this but i th there was no criminal probe uh the fbi were involved we've reached out to the fbi to try to find that file we have not found it but that those two bodies my guess is were yellow fever victims gotcha that were, were buried in the 1830s, 1840s timeframe. So that's a good one. Um, uh, the, as I say, the whole lineup of all of these wrecks, mm -hmm. there are many, many, many fatalities, not necessarily right on Wood Island, but all around it. So the, mm -hmm. spirit, the spirit life has got to be strong, uh, you know, in that whole maritime area. Um, but I'll tell you, I've been at that uh, island now for, for many years, you know, restoring it. And um, I have always had wonderful positive uh, energy from that building, and uh, no no sense of you know funny footsteps upstairs or you know uh, you know things going missing or 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 some problem stuff. You know that it seems to me the building's really pleased that we're there, and uh, the that the spirits there are are very very happy to have us. Well, I'll tell you that the best spirit that I've heard out of everything you said is the spirit of community, Sam. That's for sure. Between you and your efforts and Huge. everybody coming forward it's and you. taking ownership of this amazing historical treasure, which which it's is fun. hiding in plain sight. It is. And, you know, that's an interesting point because our area is rich with cultural uh, uh, gems, historical this and that every which way. Portsmouth, New Hampshire is unbelievable. York Harbor, you know, the village of York, uh, Kittery itself. There's so much history here. Uh, that something like this can get overlooked. And it, frankly, it's inaccessible. You can't get there. Uh, so it's, it's frankly very easy to overlook. So it's, it's exciting that this has all come to pass. I'll tell you, we have a uh, constant contact email database mm -hmm. where we send out infrequent, you know, everyone's got too much in their emails. We send out infrequent updates and we're probably just about to do one as I say, the pier is just about to happen, so we better take some pictures of that, send it out. But we have we have over two thousand folks on that database, and if anyone would like to, um, the easy thing to do is just go ahead and uh, our webpage, uh, Wood Island Life Saving Station Association, um, has a you know contact button. Mm -hmm. So if you just hit the contact button and say, "Hey, I'd like to be in touch," we'll put you right on our database, and that'll be great. All right, fantastic. And I will be sure to share all the contact information in this program with everybody, Sam. So I am uh, so excited to fill up your mailbox, maybe with even more people who are, who are late donations, who are like, wait oh, a minute, I right. want to help out with what's well, going on at Wood we need, Island. We need dough. We need dough. I, I'll tell you, we think it's about a shy of $5 million project, and we've raised about $4.4 million. So we're well into it, but we need some help. We're in the home stretch. Let's let's home get stretch. it done, Sam. I would let's love nothing more. Nothing I'd love more than to do this show from an open maritime museum. That would be wonderful. Absolutely. And I can't wait to get out there and visit myself. <laughs> Great. 
thank you so much, Sam, for taking the time for explaining. I am so excited about everything that I've heard. I think I'm going to go take a ride by and see great. it as best I can from Fort Foster today. Great, great, great. Talk to you soon, Roxy. That's wonderful. All right, you too, Sam. Thank take you, care. <laughs> Thank you.